Good evening, John. How are you doing? Good. Congratulations on the win tonight and going out on your own terms. Uh, was oh. the yeah? I'm over here. So, Sorry, I couldn't find you. That's all right. A lot of lights. That's uh, gotcha. Uh, was the retirement announcement something that you were going to do no matter what the result tonight was, or was this a was that something that if you win you'll go out like this? If it didn't go out your way, that you would go back and reevaluate? No, I I knew I was done. Um, you know, I'm 38. I uh, have been competing at a pretty high level since uh middle school and high school you know and i'm just uh a lot of intensity and i'm ready to move on to a part of my life where i live vicariously through uh other people in the gym you know and uh my, my main training partner is cory crumpler over here i've been putting him through a lot making him work for a long time to get me ready for things it's time to uh you know move on and uh do other things and run my gym and uh it was just a real blessing to have a fight like that with somebody that caliber. Um, you know, it would have been great to get an easy fight to go out on, but it was really good. To, I knew this last camp I had to treat it like I'm fighting for a world title uh, to be able to come out with a win. And it wasn't exciting. And if uh, I know people, some people uh, booed and didn't like it, but if you think I wanted to lay there and squeeze him for that long, you're wrong. I wanted out. Uh, so it's just what I had to do. So speaking to that, what made you make that decision in the third round to basically just hang on for that victory? So um, it's kind of funny. I went out going in the third round. I was like, all right, I just got to get one more takedown. Um, I'll control and uh, maybe I'll open up a little bit if I get on top this time because it wasn't as you know desperate to just make sure I control the round. And I slipped on my takedown. So when he hit, there's a lot of separation. I dove on him and I just kind of ended up with that body triangle. And I told myself, you know, one of my uh, uh, training partners is Joe Selecki, and he's the master of holding that body triangle from standing. And I just told myself, if Joe Selecki can do it, I can man up and I can do it for the rest of this round. And I thought the round was almost over and looked at the clock and there's three minutes left. And the, uh, I was real bummed out when I saw that, but, uh, I was able to stick with it. And I, you know, you, you get to the point where you're kind of past the point of no return, your legs are burnt out. There's no letting go. And it's just what you got to stick with. So when the bulls start to come in, that didn't make you want to, you know, re restart the fight, you know, you know, change some blows. I don't know if you've ever been hit by Aaron Jeffrey, but it did not make me want to stand back in front of him. Hey, what's going on, John? MMA locker room here, part of Puff Sports Radio. Fanatical win out there, man. How you feeling? Uh, feeling good. I appreciate that. Thank you. So let's look back at your career real quick. A little jog down memory lane. You ever remember finishing a fight like that, being a big underdog? Uh, yeah, you know, I think, uh, I, th I started my career that way. I kind of just took fights I, coming out of college and being a, a collegiate national champ. It was hard to get fights. So I would just travel, go to people's hometowns where they're the big, uh, you know, they're supposed to beat me up and go fight like that. So kind of did that my whole career coming in, uh, taking the fight where Brandon Halsey was supposed to be his fight to get back to taking the title again, you know? Um, but, uh, I kind of surprised my ranking is higher than his and I was the big underdog, but, uh, you know, I knew uh, coming in, it was just another one of those fights where it doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. I know what I can do. And I was a little surprised that I was never able to open up on the ground. I thought eventually he's going to stop having that uh, explosion to get up, but he never slowed down. So I, I never did find my spot to start looking for subs. Got it. And the same was out there as, you know, whoever fights John Salter is you're pretty much a title fight away from fighting for that belt. I mean, you didn't waste no energy out there. We know you retired, but, you know, you feel like you might be having that itch a little bit anytime soon to come back after that win. I'll say the only way that I come back um, is if Costello Van Stinas wins the title and wants to fight me again. That'd be the only way I come back. I know he really wants to fight me again. Um Lost a few years off my life in that fight, but I'll do it again if he's got the title. That's the only way. Hey, John, K. Williams for Can Chronicles Media. Congratulations on a well-decorated career. Thank As you so you much. exit the great sport of MMA, what does the term legacy mean for you personally? I think at this point, it's uh, growing the sport, helping people compete in the sport, um, you know, being a coach, and, uh, you know, maybe uh, more than that, being a role model to help People need to uh, prepare to fight, uh, how to act when they're fighting and everything like that. So I think um, just going back to my gym, Salty Dog Jiu-Jitsu and Fort City MMA and uh, just growing the sport from there. And I think that's where I want my legacy to be. I never wanted people to remember me as this fighter and everything like that. I want people to remember me as a man that follows Christ and that's uh, 
you know, I'm, uh, support my family in every way that I can, you know, and I think that's the most important thing I can do. So I hope that, uh, that's the legacy that I leave. Hey, John, uh, congrats on the win. Thank uh, you question, so much. Man. Thank you. Yeah. Um, question, man. Uh, you pretty much dominated the fight. I was very, uh, uh, impressed with the way that you, uh, did your game plan there, but did he do anything in particular that like surprised you or maybe his strength or anything that you noticed that you were like, Whoa, man. Well, what I really expected that, I mean, that's, uh, one of the best questions. Cause I, I came out thinking I'm going to trap that far arm. We worked on that a lot, trap that far arm, And then I'm eventually going to move to dominant position. And, uh, every time I let go of the arm, he's right back up on it. And I thought, okay, second round he's, he's cooked. He's not going to be able to have that kind of pace by getting up on his elbow. And he did it every time. And the other thing is I landed some, uh, what I thought was some pretty hard shots. I mean, I know I don't hit super hard, but for me, I thought they were pretty hard shots. And every time he's right back in my face and just a real bummer that I don't have more power, I guess. But uh, he, he was just a stud everywhere and never slowed down. And uh, as we all saw you uh, retired after the fight, um, how do you like celebrate now? You're kind of close to San Diego, Los Angeles, and then what, four hours away is Vegas. <laughs> you gonna, you, or are, you, are you just going to go back home? Yeah, um, get back home to, uh, to my daughter. She just turned two and uh, we're having – uh, her two-year-old birthday this next week. Uh, so, and my favorite holiday Easter is coming up. So that's how we're going to celebrate. There's family stuff and I uh, can't wait. Hey, John, right here. Uh, Simon Simono with MMA Junkie. Congratulations on the win and a good uh, and a good career as well. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, not everybody, um, when they're about to announce their retirement, is receiving booze. And, <laughs> you know, what did you think of the moment, the way the crowd was treating you as you were getting ready to say your farewell? Um, you know, MMA fans are the best and they're the worst, you know, um, I, I love, I love the fans and how excited they are. And the funny thing is the person that boos you when you walk by them, they can't wait to give you a high five and shake your hand. Um, you know, it's just the nature of the sport and I don't like being boring. I like putting people away, you know, I, I'm a finisher. Uh, I think you see that throughout my career. And so, you know, if I'm not going for a finish, it's because who I'm fighting is not giving me any opportunities. And, um, so it just is what it is. That wasn't uh, my game plan just to hold him down. My game plan was to cook him and finish him. And uh, just a guy that I'm I'm not uh, going to find a way to finish. And Jeffrey is uh, someone that Bellator is high on. As you uh, exit, do you feel a little bad that you send him out, uh, that you go out, you know, with a W, but you send this guy with, with an L uh, to his record? No, I think um, you look through my career, you look at um, – you know, Aaron Jeffrey, you look at Costello Vincenas, you look at uh, Dustin Jacoby um, and Chitty and Jaquani. I mean, I've put a lot of L's on people's records that have gone on some big tears and uh, really showed what they have the ability to do. So I have no doubt that Aaron Jeffrey is going to be, you know, a uh, top two or three guy in a year or two. So, um, you know, I don't think that that's going to set his career back at all. And the last question for me, as you leave MMA as a competitor, uh, what do you, what do you hope for, uh, for the sport from this point forward? Um, you know, I just hope it keeps growing. I think it's getting more mainstream. I think that's huge. Um, and I, I hope that, uh, people realize that, uh, they're, the role models to kids now, you know I mean? There was a time when MMA was kids didn't watch MMA, you know, they do now. So I hope that fighters realize you need to put on, you know, uh, a good show for how people should act as they grow and show class. So that's what I really hope for the sport, you know, um, and I'm excited to see where it goes. It's just all uphill, you know, and it just gets more and more professional every day. I think that's awesome. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. Hey, John, congratulations on your win and congratulations you. on a great career. You've, uh, you've been in this game for a long time. Um, for sure. <laughs> just uh, what do you want your legacy to be? And like, what do you want people to remember John Salter as? Well, I, I hope that um, – what people see is that I was not a crazy athletic explosive guy. I was just able to outwork everybody. And I always kind of told myself when I was in college, you know, coming in, these guys are way better wrestlers than me. I can't do a whole lot, uh, you know, my freshman year to, to change that, but I can affect that I'm in the weight room. more than they are. You know, I can be stronger than them. And I just hope that people see, you know, even if you don't necessarily have that uh, fast twitch muscle that some of these guys have, that people love seeing these knockouts that, you work hard enough, you can uh, make a place for yourself in this uh, sport. Thank you, John. Thank you, guys.
Thank you, John. Can you pass that, Alex? Let me pass that. Thank you, John. Thanks for everything. All right, let's open it up. What's up, Scott? Right over here. I don't have a question. I just want to tell you, you look fly as all heck in that leather jacket, man. Uh, you know, it feels good to uh, just come here and relax and watch a great show and and uh, just be a fan for the night. So uh, it felt good to just ca just casual. Scott, congratulations on another uh, great event, man. Uh, what were your thoughts overall? I'll tell you, it's. Um, I think it was a great show. And I think that um, you got the big knockout at the end. And man, he's so dangerous. Uh, it's scary because one punch could change the whole outcome of the fight. And uh, and then the girls' fight was amazing. It was unbelievable. And and you, I think you got a chance to see a lot of the uh, up and coming fighters that have a chance to work their way up and, and test themselves. And and some for some it worked out, for some it didn't. And uh, some some fighters have to go back to the drawing board. But uh, even the fighters, some of them that uh, need to go back to the drawing board, I have a lot of high hopes for them. And, uh, you know, hopefully they'll go back in the gym and, and get cracking and we'll get them back in here, back in here as soon as we can. How cool is it to see Daniel James? Um, you know, he fought Bellator many years ago, didn't make it, went on the regional scene, fought his way back, has two big knockouts. Um, I mean, you know, you do, you guys do have a fight coming up in Chicago. Is that like where you put him in Chicago or do you, or, or is he right there for a title shot? Um, I tell you, the, the title shot is uh, most likely going to go to uh, Linton Vassal because he's been, you know, on a tear too. But uh, I think he's right up there. We definitely will invite him to come fight in Chicago. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I didn't know if he was going to get hurt or injured or sometimes, you know, it's better just to wait to see what happens. But uh, I reached out to uh, our fight team. I said, look, please invite him to come fight. If he wants to do it, we'd love to have him. I think Chicago is an unbelievable fight card, you know, stacked top to bottom already. But Putting him in the mix just makes a lot of sense because he is from Chicago and he's been on terror, uh, you know, doing his thing. And and this is just another statement uh, win for his resume. And and let's let's keep this kid busy. Is it inspiring just to see him? Like he's just, it's just his journey. Like it's 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 been pretty crazy. Yeah, I'm not sure if you got to see the piece that uh, that uh, that was created. The feature piece was was pretty amazing. I really enjoyed watching it. And and uh, it's like uh, you know, it, it's just. It was it's like a, a human human interest piece of overcoming over, overcoming and constantly overcoming and and it just shows like hey keep your mind focused keep your you know your your keep your goal keep your goals in front of you and keep your target in sight and you'll and you'll have something to just keep working for and, and that's what he's been doing I mean he's he's been uh, you know at this a very long time and like you said he's now just re-emerging and it's a different, it's a new, uh, to me, it's a, it's a new fighter and, and let's, let's see how far he can take it. I mean, he definitely, if he keeps winning, he's going to get a shot. He's, you know, if, 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 you know, he wants to wait, that's fine. But if he, if he wins another fight, he's definitely going to be right in that mix too. I think one of the bigger storylines as well is a bunch of prospects got their first loss tonight, Lance Gibson, Sullivan Colley. Um, what, what, what were your thoughts on that? And was it kind of surprising? You know, I mean, Lance, that was a big step up for Lance. And, and you know, it's good to test yourself to see where you're at. That doesn't mean he's not a great fighter and not still not a great blue chip prospect. It just happens that he lost tonight, and that's just how it is. I mean, MMA is, is a very, very, it's a very, very tricky sport. And you have to be, you know, on it at all times. And, and one wrong move, and it's over, right? So... That's 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 that beauty. That's the beauty of MMA. That's why we love it. It's fast. It's explosive. It's raw, and it's real. So, you know, he'll go back to the drawing board, get to look at his fight, test him, and see what he needs to work on, and then go back and and work on on your craft. Hi, Scott. I'm wondering if you could clear up um, some talk. Pre this co-main event, uh, Kat had come out and said that she was told that she was going to be fighting for a vacant title and then there wasn't going to be a title shot. Can, can you talk to me a little bit about is she correct or what happened going into Yeah, listen, I, I, I'm not sure what Kat heard because I never talked to her directly, but I can tell you this uh, from the company standpoint, this was always a three-round uh, elimination fight for the number one contender spot. Your cyborg is still the current champion. We still have her under contract right now. We have her under uh, a matching rights provision. We are negotiating with her. And we expect her to bring her back here, uh, you know, 
at some point this year. So to me that now it's a it's a it's gonna be a great fight. Hopefully we'll put this together with Chris in the next couple of weeks and her and Kat and we can uh, work on a on a big fight for the two of them to to fight for Chris's belt. So you know somewhere along the line between my fight team and 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 Ed Suarez and and dialogue, I, I really I told them I said I don't know I don't know where this got lost, but uh, from a from our perspective it's always been a three round elimination fight. Do you think it's possible that she, I don't want to say made it up, but was kind of putting that out into the universe, hoping that that could be, could potentially be what happened? I, I have no idea. I, I, like I said, I haven't, I haven't talked to her, but um, um, if it was a title fight, a five round championship fight, I think I definitely would have known about it. So, you know, it, it was never, there was never any dialogue inside the company for that to happen. And I know you mentioned Cyborg. Um, it sounds like you want to put her with with Cat, but she, you are still negotiating with her. I'm wondering if there's any negotiations going on with Kayla Harrison. We noticed that she's not in the PFL tournament this season. Has there been any talk about that fight? Maybe possibly coming I mean, to Bellator. You know, I mean, Kayla is still in the contract with another company, so I can't speak to that. But uh, our intentions are to bring you know Chris back here. We've had a great relationship for a long time, and uh, she still is an amazing talent, and she's our champion right now. So. It's just a matter of working out the details. Sometimes these things take time because, you know, you're talking about a lot of a lot of details, right? So I feel we're we're in a good place to put this together. And then my last question: um, you you touched on the Chicago card. I'm wondering if you could talk to me about Patricio and how that that third title um, idea came about, and when did that idea first start? Well, you know, I'll tell you. Um, this was probably about six months ago. He came to us and said, "Look, I want to eventually go down to 35." And, you know, I want to wait. I'll wait to fight AJ at 45 if AJ wants to say 45. And I really want that fight. So he really wants to fight AJ at some point. But uh, AJ chose to fight in the 55-pound tournament. So he knew that fight was off. And then he said, okay, well, then I, I want to move down to 35. And I want to be the first champion to, you know, to win the 55-pound, uh, the 45, and the 35. So... He, uh, he chose to move down in weight, and uh, we knew Pettis was coming off that uh, that injury, and he, you know, he's still our current champion. And 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 to me, it's it's a great thing because Stotts and uh, Mix will have that fight in uh, Hawaii next in three weeks, actually, and then we have the fight in June, and by October or November, we'll have another fight between the two of them. So it'll be it'll be a, just an amazing 135 pound. Uh, weight class, almost like a like a like a, a, a mini runoff on its own. So really excited because all four of those fighters are super talented. But Pitbull is a guy, you know, being you know, the, I think the face of the company being here so long and being so dominant. Uh, I think he deserves to have have this shot. And he wasn't, you know, he's already already been waiting since December the thirty first, right? He fought in Japan for us. Um, so he wanted this to be his next fight, and and we didn't want to make him wait till the end of the year or until. So we said, look, we can fit this in. And when, when we have time, we'll put the other fights together for uh, the, like the finals of Stotts mix. We'll fight the winner of Pitbull versus uh, Pettis. So that's, that, that's, that's, you know, we thought that was just a great way to, uh, to run up that division. So we're excited. I'm excited. That's going to be a, a great fight. And Chicago is an unbelievable fight card. I mean, it's really, really uh, stacked from top to bottom. And I think that you guys, probably noticed like you know we when we do the fights on showtime or cbs we're not just going to bring one main event we're bringing three maybe four fights that could be big fights on its own and uh it's it's been a lot of fun to put these fights together uh, and uh, and watch these fighters grow scott right here so speaking of the cbs card you started off the year on fire on cbs now you got this card in, in hawaii and now the stack card in chicago how do your team go about putting these fights together and putting all this craziness, you know, and managing it? You know, I'll tell you, honestly, it's when I, when I look back at the power of this roster, it's unbelievable how much firepower we have. And it has been so fun to sit down with the fight team and, and, and just dabble as to what about this fight? And what about that fight? And what happens if this person wins? What happened? I mean, it's really one of the reasons I got into the fight promotion business to see, well, how, what about this person fighting that person? So it's been fun doing that. And with a roster this deep, I mean, if you look at our 145, or 155, look at our 170, the best 170 pound in the world, the best 185 pound in the world, 
Pitbull arguably is best 145 pounder right now. I mean, I'd love to see that fight happen, right? Uh, and then we have Johnny Evelyn at 185. You guys have seen the heat on him lately. Even, you know, people from all, all different companies are saying how great this kid is. And uh, and then the 205 Nemkov. I don't think there's any fighter at 205 that can beat Nemkov. So we have a just an amazing fight roster. And that's what it starts with is the talent base. And, and it wasn't really just the fight on CBS. To me, it was the fight in Dublin. When we, when we broke our attendance record in Dublin, we had such a great event over there. And then it led to the Tokyo event, which was unbelievable. Uh, it was really Japanese MMA has, has made a comeback. And, and uh, I feel like it's kind of, because I, I, I was around in the Pride days working for K1 and I got to go to those fights. I got to see the, the swell of, of excitement and uh, enthusiasm from the Japanese fans when Pride was in its heyday. And they had the best fighters in the world at that time. Honestly, that far none, they, they were the king. And the Japanese fans really engaged and, and I felt, I could feel that energy coming back now. So to, to be a part of that in, uh, on New Year's Eve with Saki Bar, whether win or lose, there was some great matchups. And I felt that was another, you know, grand slam for us. And then going right into the CBS card. And then we had uh, the fight in Ireland. And then we had the fight in San Jose. San Jose was unbelievable. And then, uh, you know, now we go to Hawaii. We finished the tournament. Go to Chicago. It's just like reloading and reloading and reloading. I mean, it really comes down to, you know, the fight roster great, makes all these fights possible. And, uh, you know, we spent the last six, eight years really building these, this talent. <laughs> right back here how's it going scott mma locker room part of puff sports radio just want to say hey you did it again man you put on another star study event but out of all the fighters on the card what's one of the fighters that stood out to you tonight you know that's a tough one because there's a lot of really good fights tonight right? and um i i honestly was really impressed with the with the kazangano fight and i had a lot of great transitions back and forth and um i didn't know who was going to win I thought it was going to be a great fight, but it turned out to be an amazing fight. And uh, I wouldn't even mind running that back at some point, right? Come on, that was just fun to watch. So to me, the great knockout at the end, that was, that was amazing. But to me, that fight was, to me, the, the fight that really caught my eye was how much resilience these ladies had. And, and, they, and they had such a great fight. And it was a great MMA fight, mixed martial arts fight. So I enjoyed it. And then just to speak on the talent that you got, you know, a lot of underdogs came out and won today. So it just shows that the talent here at Bellator is here to stay, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, um, in a fight, anything can happen, right? And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's no knock on the, on the loser. And that's why these guys go in the cage. They want to test themselves. And they want to move forward in the rankings. And they want to eventually get to the title fight. And it's our job to get them in that position. It just happens right now from top to bottom, from 135 all the way up to our heavyweight division. It's it's a, it's a it's a great time to be in the Bellator business. Hey Scott, congrats on another great uh, event this evening. Uh, in my, I think in my eyes, it was one of the first in MMA history. Just being a part of the sport, uh, we saw a proposal, a marriage proposal inside the octagon after one of those fights when Luke Trainer proposed to his fiance. And uh, I was wondering if you had any thoughts for that because I know to a lot of us that was a first. You know what I'll tell you, um, I actually didn't see that proposal, so uh, I'll have to catch it. But we've had we had another proposal at the Mohegan Sun during the COVID time when we were kind of locked down. And it was one of our COVID staff members that proposed to his wife. And um, so this is number two. And I heard there's going to be a number three here really soon. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give you guys a little bit of heads up on that one next time. Well, thank you, Scott. Have a great night. Thanks, guys. Hey, Daniel, congrats on a great win uh, this evening. Huge, huge knockout, number two in a row. Uh, I just want to know, what was the game plan like coming into this fight? Oh, man. The game plan was to come out. To be honest with you, we came out. We was waiting on him to throw those kicks, so we worked on checking kicks. And somehow he, you know, the boy got some heavy kicks. I'm not going to lie. 
you know, at one time I tried to kick check and he kicked straight through it. You know, I'm used to taking them, but I'm like, it's my first time really trying to check some kicks. So I wasn't, I was so focused on countering him. And then I kind of lost sight of what I should have been doing in the first round. So, you know, so things were slowed in the first round and I was kind of pick it back, pick it up. And you're also on a, a nice win streak here. You know, a couple in a row doing great, great performances. Uh, is this kind of what you envisioned? I guess we can say your return to Bellator. Uh, is this the path that you envisioned? And it seems like you put a lot of work in. Is this where you, everything that you expected? Yeah, this is everything I expected. You know what I'm saying? I'm on a, um, a winning streak. Um, what is it, about five, six, five, five? Yeah, that's more than a couple. <laughs> well, a five fight winning streak. So, yes, yeah, just like I planned, I just feel like it, right now you've seen me in the toughest situations in a fight. So it's like I'm not, is it's, right now, point of my career is, is no such thing as losing. You know what I'm saying? And that's just me just being confident. And I know that I put in enough work that if I can come out of something like that, you know, like you've seen the chokehold, you've seen the me coming back from these devastating kicks, um, you've seen me from being on the ground. I chose to rest on the ground when my cellar gums was on me because my leg, he did some damage. I'm being honest and say that, you know. So I was, I wanted to rest on the ground. So I, I knew I was about to get up and come out of sprint. So, you know, so that's, that's you know, that kind of makes sense to you. And for you, what's next on, what's next from here? Or um, getting back to the drawing board and looking forward to what's next for you this year? First, I'm going to heal this damn leg. Then I'm going to get back to training. You know, uh, just spend a little time with my son, uh, my boys. They boxing right now. So um one on um, eight, one on um, fourteen. Just want to just try to invest the time into them. Um right now they they at the age that they really see what their daddy's doing. And um, you know, I'm just trying to really inspire them as young men um to just bite down and move forward in life. So for them to see me do this and come back from all this craziness in the fight and um and have fun. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I won't, I'm just being able to inspire them and just put a little time into them and um and um get back to training. Yeah, Daniel. Congratulations. Um, <clears throat> Scott said that, you know, Linton Vessel is probably going to get the next title shot, but there is a big fight coming to Chicago. If you're, he if you're, if your leg heals by then, are you, are you trying to hop on that card? Yeah, my leg will be healed. I heal like a dog. You know what I'm saying? Like I literally heal fast, but um, you can't have none in Chicago without me. You know what I'm saying? So people are already buying tickets. You know, so people already text me like, you don't get my four seats now. So Chicago waiting, they're waiting on me. And it's in June. So we there. And then finally for me, man, um, there, was, there was a lot of chatter, you know, people not giving respect to this main event. People are saying, like, why is this the main event? Do you think you shut them up? Yeah, I shut them up. Those people that just said that, those people really not MMA fans. Those people say, oh, you ask those people in the street, you say, hey, what do you do? Well, I, I, do, I, do, I do UFC. I'm like, what is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, they not fans. A MMA fan is a person that studied the arts, watch fights from all different aspects, from, from Bellator to UFC to one FC. They watch all this. Them real fans. These people that's on there with these keyboard warriors, they don't really know because tonight you was a non-believer, you're a believer now. How could you not like it? Like, how could you not like what I did? Daniel, in the uh, closing moments of the fight where you got the knockout, was that something that was scouted or did you just see an opening and react to it? Um. Pretty much there's a lot of reaction. So I'm always going to throw the jab, uppercut, hook. That's just like my go-to. So when I when I saw him, that I, when I saw Marcelo Gomes moving, when I threw little punches, little jabs and stuff like that, I'm like, he don't want to get hit. Like, he don't want to get hit. And I did him just being young in the sport, and I understand that, like, you're going to get hit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to get kicked, you're going to get hit. So you can't expect to do damage and not receive damage. But I noticed that he, these guys got glass chins. You know what I'm saying? So... I knew I was going to knock him out with the uppercut, though. I knew I was going to land the uppercut today. I told Coach in the back room, I say, push come to shove, and I don't follow the game plan. I'm going to do what I do, and that might be the uppercut or a straight. Right here. So after the first two rounds, did you believe that you were up in the fight, or was there a sense of urgency going into the third? Um, You know, he had me on the ground, so my back was on the ground. So I don't, I don't care about what I was in the round or how many – what round I'm winning. I just need to win one with a knockout. Like, I, if I'm losing three rounds, I got to make sure the fourth round is going to be a winning round for me. And that's a knockout, a finishing round. So it don't matter how many rounds somebody win, I'm a, I don't care if I won the first or second round. I, I knocked them out.
So what was the talk in your corner going into that third? Did they tell you go knock him out? Oh, yeah. I told, I went to the corner coach. They sit down. I told coach, I said, hey, I got to go southpaw. And he was like, no, that leg is not done yet. Bite down and move forward. And I went there. He said, you got a lot in you. And I said, I can go southpaw and knock him out. He said, I know that, but that leg is not done. Let's keep it orthodox and knock him out. And I went and knocked him out. He just said, knock him out. He said, go and knock him out. How's it going, Daniel? MMA Locker Room, part of Pub Sports Radio. Shot down in the building. Yes, sir. She ain't you Yes, sir, man. So it seems like, you know, you hurt your little leg right there, but you're walking out with some Jordans on, man. So, you know, you got any sneakers in mind that you plan on buying after this one? Man, I'm trying to get those Travis Scott. Mm, you know, those Travis, yeah, I'm trying to get them Travis Scott's, both pair. And, um, uh, man, I'm a sneaker junkie too, man. My friends are sneaker heads, but like, I just became a sneaker junkie years ago. I like jewelry, watches and nice piece of neck piece. Out of my Pukets and Rolex watch, uh, some nice, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I like stuff like that, a Cuban. Um, but I love shoes. Them Travis Scott's. If anybody got them Travis Scott, send them to me. 13. There you go. You heard it right there. Yes, Another sir. thing. Can you talk to me about your walkout music? Because do me for a little loop. You know, when you walked out, I heard some type of music. But when Gomes walked out, I heard Tupac. What was you walking out to? I walked out to Chicago Bulls theme song. You feel me? Jordan has six rings. I'm trying to get to seven one. That's the Bellator belt. That song gonna play every time I walk out from now. On. Hey, Daniel K. Ones for Can Chronicles Media. Congratulations on the win, man. Um, in our interview a couple weeks ago, almost a month ago, you talked about giving out ass whoopings. Yeah. And you know, you giving them, you give them out with no problem. Was tonight an example of you giving out an ass whooping? Yeah, tonight was an ass whooping. Now, I was thinking about you, Ken. Um. When I was watching the um, promo that they did, me and Marcella, he say, I, I respect him. He's a good fighter, but, you know, I'm a better fighter. I'm looking like, like, what do these people be thinking? I'm like, you know, it's, I'm not the guy that sit up there and talk smack. But it's like when I get the weigh-ins and I look at you in your face and I size you up, it's like, it's like all the talking is done now. Like, I'm in front of you. I'm big. I came in the ring 20 pounds heavier than you today. I'm going to always do that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, I'm a nice guy. I respect everybody. But when I stop smiling, that's when everything stops. And um, and I hand out an ass with me tonight. At any given time during the fight tonight, uh, did you find yourself fighting with some type of frustration? No, no, I didn't, I didn't find myself fighting with any frustration. You know what I'm saying? I kept it cool. You know what I'm saying? Back then, early in my career, like when I was around Marcella Gomes' um, age, um, I probably would have lost my composure, but I just, I got to get it because, you know, but now it's just about me being aware in that cage and being a veteran and understanding where I'm at. I know that the fight either going to end with a knockout or a tap out. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to be, it's going to be some damage. Like this, you could play football, basketball. You can't play this. You got to do this. This is different. I got them Starbucks cookies for you too, man. I, man, you see me looking around like a mice in the cookie job, right? I'm like, <laughs> I want them. Yeah, that's my favorite cookie to eat, man. I, I got to get me a cookie. I got to get me a cookie. Congratulations on the win, man. Appreciate it. What's up, Daniel? How you doing? Congratulations. You got mad at me the first time I did this, but I'm going to try one more time. Maybe you'll like it more this time. Uh, basically, nine years ago today, you won your first fight with Bellator, March 2014. You were the first fight of the night. Now, tonight, main event. You see your name on the billboards, the shirts, the promos, all this. Yeah, commercials. Mm -hmm. All I, that. I think, we gonna, I think the company is going to do their thing now. Sell a lot of more shirts. Yep. Yeah, they're going to push gonna sell you. Sell a lot of more shorts. They're going to sell a lot of more promos. I look cute on camera. I'm like a good, cute chocolate guy. You know what I'm saying? That's everybody want. Like the chocolate guy with the dreads. Nice to everybody. Like the chocolate heavyweight. And we're going to get that. I might wear that on my shirt. Chocolate heavyweight. Bella toy. Does the camera add five pounds or not for you? Huh? Does the camera add five pounds or no? No, oh, shit. I'm 280 when I get in the ring. 275. <laughs> Legit. All right. What I was going to ask was, I know you're still hungry. I know you want more. You want the strap. You want the Bella toy world title. But... Do you think in a few days, maybe a week, it's all going to set in? Do you think you'll sit back and say, like, wow, give yourself a pat on the back. I'm really doing everything I set out to all those years ago? Yeah, I'm sitting back, man. No, some, listen, man, when I be sitting up here, and I don't go on rants. I just, you know, I be talking sometimes. And I know the business. You know, you got to sell. You got to get, you know. Like, when I call Ryan Bader out, it's no ill will and everything. But I think it'll be a good fight. And um, I do want that fight. I won't want to wait on it. But, uh, you know, well, was there, they gave Lynn Vassell a shot. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to respect that. But the thing is, if they decide to say, hey, this might work better, I'm down for it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, 
those are some awesome guys, man. I got a chance to see Ryan Bader today, and it's like I say, there's no ill will. Like we're gonna, we're gonna have fun when we get in there, and it's gonna be respectful, and it's gonna be somebody gonna, you know, leave the cage with their hand raised. You know what I'm saying? And and I really dream this. I really dream this. You know what I'm saying? I don't dream when I sleep. I dream when I'm walking around. I dream every day. When I'm just walking around. I vision everything. You're not dreaming now, though. You're doing it. I know it's a reality. Yeah, you made it a reality. You know what I'm saying? But it's always good to make new ones. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, man. So tonight I created a new one. Daniel James. Mike Finch. <laughs> another knockout, another uppercut. You're the underdog again. You go out there and you finish the fight. What did you see that made you let your hands go like that? I felt that leg starting to hurt. And I say, if I don't go out there right now, he's going to kick it one more time and these people are going to see me fall. <laughs> I said, I will refuse to let these people see me fall. Like, I refuse that. You know, I'd rather, I'd rather die than give up. You know what I'm saying? And I know it sounds crazy, but I'd rather die than give up. You know what I'm saying? I cannot give up like that. Like, when I know it's people out here watching and it's people out there in this crowd, like, I don't know how every individual feel in here, but, like, I inspire so many people. There's so many people waiting on me back home. There's so many people that message me on Instagram and Facebook. I don't have anybody operating my social media. It's me. I respond to people. And when I respond to these people, I have people telling me that I help them through things in life, you know, uh, you know, I, like telling me that like, yo, like, man, listen, I had a kid message me last week and I told him that I will keep this confidential. I just feel like it needs to be said because I see it all the time. The kid was 17 years old. 17 years old, he just turned 17 last month. And um, the kids say, he didn't know what to do with himself. He didn't feel worthy and this and that. So I'm like, yo, come on, man. What are you talking about? And the kid wanted to kill himself. So when you say stuff like that, I don't care if he's trying to get some, me to send him something or whatever, but I don't know. I can't take that for granted. But I'm, I just say, hey, I send you a picture with my autograph or try to get some shirts from Bellator and send them to you. So my shirts that I got in my bag from Bellator, I'm going to send those shirts to that kid, whether he playing or not. I feel like it's time I can save a life. I don't want to turn on the news and say some kid, could, you know what I'm saying? It'll be on my conscience. I can't do that. You fight for more than just you out there. It's a cause. After the fight, Ryan Bader stood up. You and the champ had a moment. Recount that moment for me. What did you think about the response from Ryan? I thought you were pretty respectful, Daniel. Yeah, I was respectful. And I, I admit, you know what, I respect Ryan Bader. I do. You know, at the end of the day, two warriors has to do things. It's like Spartacus. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a game. You come in and you perform and, and Ron Bader stood up. And I appreciate Ron Bader standing up for me. For him to stand up and applaud me and him to accept what I said, he was like, yo, this is this big, this big MF right here. Yeah, I like this big man. Yeah, I like him to roll around with the teddy bear. We just two big teddy bears, man, and we just want to cuddle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I just think that, you know, it's a little bit of, you know, Dave and Goliath, but Goliath wins. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. I know you want that fight, but my last question for you, if you can't get it in June because of this linton Vassell matchup, who would you like to see? I mean, I'd like to see some, I don't know, you know, whoever Bellator has. It had to be somebody in front of me, not nobody in back of me. It don't make no sense to go back. You know, give me everybody in front of me. Like, you don't have anybody. Like, who you going to give me? You know, give me Mario or something. He's a 6'8 guy. I like fighting tall guys like that. You know what I'm saying? Give me, you know, give me guys like, you know, just give me, give me, let's put on a show. Whoever Bellator got for me, give me, let's do a show. You know what I'm saying? If they don't have nobody for me, I'll still be in attendance. It don't matter. But, I, you know, it's, I'm a part of the company. I'm a company guy. I love the company. I always wanted to fight for Bellator. And I'm just happy to be here today. And I'm willing to do whatever I can to keep my winning streak. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate it. Congratulations, coach.
it appeared you guys you were saying something to each other. Uh, do you care to share what was exchanged with you guys at that point? I don't. I don't know now. I don't remember. Um, I I know. I respect her a lot. I know she respects me a lot. Um, it's always an awkward fight week because I I can't talk to opponents. I can't be around them. I'm, there's no friendly piece to that for me, you know. So um, as soon as it's over, it's almost like the embrace gets to happen. And like I know how hard I worked. I know how hard she worked. Like we went to war, and you know, there's there's something there, you know. In that. Definitely looked like a sign of respect. Absolutely. Uh, at any point in the fight, uh, when it had gone to the judges, what was it that was going through your head as you were waiting the decision? Um, I knew I did a lot more damage than her. Um, and when she got into good positions, she kind of just held position. She didn't really do anything with it. And then when I got into good positions, I did a lot of damage. Um, so, you know, I can see why she would be disappointed. Um, you know, she, it was a very big adjustment for me, her being so tall. Um, you know, I felt like as I was trying to throw these kicks at her, I was aiming, you know, above even my head because she's so much taller than me. And, and that kind of made it weird for my stance and my posture, which kind of took my own feet out from under me, you know? So, you know, I, I feel like she did a good job and I did a good job. I think when it came down to the decision, it, it really came down to damage. Hey, Kat, Cade Morehouse with the Combat Lounge. Uh, you look great tonight. You got caught in some bad positions and were able to get out of them. Did you expect this fight to have this much grappling in it? Leah said before the fight, she doesn't really grapple that much. Um, so how did you feel she held up in that department? Oh, I thought I heard before the fight that she said that she does grapple a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, it was kind of weird. It was kind of weird knowing her pedigree and my pedigree and that it was kind of judo jujitsu versus wrestling jujitsu. And um, I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't really know what to think, uh, especially with her size and how um, how that was going to turn out. So, you know, I just tried to go in open minded and, you know, I trained hard at what I trained at and um, some of it worked, some of it didn't, you know, so uh, it was ultimately it was a good fight and I felt like, um, yeah. Maybe, maybe I misunderstood her, but. You, you have fought the best of the best. Where, where does Leah rank amongst them now that you guys have shared the cage together? I, I don't know. Um, I, I feel like, I don't know. I, it's a hard thing for me to gauge right now. Okay. What, when would be an ideal time to, to set up that title fight? I mean, I'd like to keep momentum too much time in between fights always feels kind of weird and, and to have to go back into like, almost forgetting how it feels and, and getting out of shape and like that valley between, um, you know, uh, I, I guess the training for it, it can be tricky. So ideally it would be cool if it's within like the next six months, something like that. And then, and then last one for me, uh, you, you've been around a long time, fought like I said, fought the best fighters in the world. Uh, if you, if this win does grant you a title fight, is this the last title run that we'll get from Kat Zingano? Or do you feel like, you know what, I have more left in the tank for, for years to come? I mean, it's punch by punch, fight by fight, breath by breath at this point. You know, um, I, I like what I'm doing. I'm still having fun and I'm still good at it, you know, so it's, you know, that's where it's at. Congratulations, Kat, on a hard-fought victory. Thank you. Hey, Kat. Um, the other day you mentioned uh, the last years of your uh, 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 career starting with this fight here. Um, when it's all said and done, whenever that day comes, what kind of stuff do you want to be remembered by? Such as that insane scream you did after the, um, the uh, whose fight was that? Uh, Amanda Nunez fight. Yeah, that scream was awesome. Um, I don't know. I don't think about all that, you know, uh, I'm, it's still very present, still very, you know, right now. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think about that. Okay. And, uh, it seems like you, uh, became kind of friendly with Leah. Um, are you still going to have that beer with her? I think so. 
I don't think I I don't I don't think we're doing it out of a shoe or whatever happens over there. But yeah, I I, I like her. I respect her. Um, you know, I I I think she's a badass and she's um, you know, very worthy opponent. Good to see that you guys made friends. Uh, and congrats on the win. Congratulations on the win, Cat. It was an awesome fight. You two were going back and forth. She would have your back. You would take her back. Talk about the grind throughout that fight. Does that fit into your mentality, your style, more maybe than hers? Um, moments felt weird. You know, it it was. I knew that it was a. You know, again, it was is grappling, um, judo, wrestling, jujitsu, all of that, and um, there was points where I was kind of like which sport are we doing right now? You know, uh, I know there was kicks in there. I know there was knees in there and elbows in there. And um, it just kind of, I don't know, it just kind of happened. It just kind of, you know, everything just happened. It looks like she caught you with one good punch. Uh, I don't know if we could call it being dropped, but she got you with a good shot. Do you remember this punch? I felt really awkward with how tall she was. Like I, I felt, I, I don't feel like I got caught hard with the punch. I almost felt like I was on my heels and got pushed backwards and landed on my ass. You know, it, not to take away from the punch, but there's things about her length and her reach that like, I did not expect that I didn't, uh, I, I would say I prepared for, but I really didn't have anyone as tall as her around. So some of it was just kind of shocking to me. She has a lot of body. She had a lot of uh, distance and trying to time that with kicks, trying to time that with height. Like it, it was definitely a challenge for me to try to figure that out on the fly. It seemed to me that the biggest difference between the two of you in this fight, when the judges were considering it, was damage. You inflicted tons of damage on her. She was wearing it. Can you talk about what separates you from these other women? Because from the outside, it seems to me that there's a mentality difference. When you get on top, you're trying to hurt them. I mean, it's that. Uh, I don't I don't get in here for fun. I don't get in here just to participate. Like, I really want to win. And I know parting, a part of winning means you, you have to hurt people and you have to cause damage. And, and I'm always looking for those cuts. Like, I'm always looking for the blood. I feel like a shark when that happens, you know, and um, there are moments that I can honestly say I take personally in there. If someone does something to me in front of all of these people, like I want to get them back, you know, so that, you know, makes me, you know, think and readjust and, and move into positions to, you know, get my lick back, you know. You got the win. What is next for you? And why don't you tell me what is the ideal situation for Kat Zingano? What would you like to see next? This fight was initially uh, offered to both me and Lee as a vacant title fight, you know, um, which would have been awesome. You know, it's, it's cool to see myself still in that number one position right now. And uh, I really don't know what Bellator is going to do with that for right now. Um, it, seems like it is a vacant title it seems like there's nobody important above me at the moment so uh i guess we just have to see what happens with that hey cat right over here uh you've achieved just about everything there is to achieve in this sport so many you know everything i'm wondering how much do you credit mr ed soars for <laughs> how you've accomplished in this fight game uh ed is like this big uncle brother support friends, you know, that I've had through everything hard, you know, um, and everything good. And uh, I don't even want to get emotional. I might get emotional, but he, he was around before I could uh, even get into the UFC, you know, before they were even figuring out if they were going to do this thing with women, you know, and just came to the gym. I, I think it was the WEC days. He was bringing Jose Aldo into my gym and um, we were all having crazy rounds and having food after watching fights. And it, it was just such a, like, such a culture. Ed is a culture in himself, you know, and it's, it's been a, a really supported, wonderful journey. And the hard times have been easier because of Ed and the, the good times have been a wonderful thing to share.
Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks.